Hey, hey, everybody. It's Regina Pugh from Dallas, Texas. I am back, as I promised. At the end of my other video, I told you guys that I will be back because uh, the Lord has given me a word that I know will be a blessing to you guys. It blessed me when I heard the Lord uh, wake me up the other night in the middle of the night. Um, I wasn't quite all the way asleep. As I explained to you guys, when the Lord speaks to me, um, it's during the night because I do the most during the day. My mind is always running. So when he speaks to me, there is no questioning, no if, ands, and buts about it. I know that it is the Lord. So the Lord simply posed the question, why not you? And I was like, okay, God, I hear you. Why not you? And then the Lord began to quote Psalms 119 and 71 that says, It was good for me that I was afflicted that I might learn of thy statues. It was good for me that I was afflicted, right? That's the word of God, that I might learn of thy statues. I have notes, so if you see me looking down, I've been working on this the last couple of days since the Lord spoke this to me, getting this together and getting it ready. Um, I love the way that the message version reads it. It says, my troubles turned out all for the best. They forced me to learn from your textbook. Truth from your mouth means more to me than striking it rich in a gold mine. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for the word that you are uh, releasing on tonight. Father, I am just a vessel. Father, use me. Lord God, to give the people what it is that you need them to have on tonight. I pray, Lord, for the listeners, oh God, that you will meet them where they are in the name of Jesus. I pray that this word encourages them. I pray that it equips them. And I pray that it strengthens them in the mighty name of Jesus. No flesh gets the glory over here, God. It's all about you. Lord God, and we'll be careful to honor you. We'll be careful to praise you in Jesus' name. So I want to... um. I want to look a little bit at, at uh, this scripture text. So this text, Psalms 119, we know that's the longest chapter in the Bible and it's divided into sections, uh, alpha, I'm sorry, alpha numerically, according to um, Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet. That's how the sections are numbered in Psalms 119. And it is known as the wisdom or the psalm of praise. Okay, that particular psalm, 119, hallelujah. So let's look at the definition of affliction. Affliction simply means something that causes pain. Something that causes pain, something that causes hurt, something that causes a level of suffering, right? And then we look at statues. Statues are the decrees made from a sovereign God. Listen, even the dictionary has to bow to the Lord, okay? It says a, a decree made by a sovereign God. We know there's only one God, okay? So listen, when we talk about afflictions, we all know who comes to mind first biblically. Okay. Like the ultimate example of affliction is our brother, Job. Uh, the Bible refers to him in Job one, the beginning of the chapter, it says that he was an upright man. The, the scripture says that he was a perfect, perfect man. Like that's a big word to use to describe somebody as being perfect. And then the scripture goes on to say that he eschewed evil, which means that he shunned evil, right? And it says one who feared the Lord. Uh, the chapter continues to go on into all that Job had, all that he owned, his cattle. We know that, um, you know, he had a wife, he had children. And in biblical times, their cattle represented uh, their level, their status of wealth, right? So he was a very wealthy and a very rich man. And we get around to about uh, verse six when we see the scripture says that um, it says the sons of God appeared before the Lord. The sons of God appeared before the Lord uh, along with Satan. So I want you to understand that when they talk about the sons of God, we are speaking about angels, right? So we're still, we're speaking this text. It, I'm sorry. Blah, blah, blah. This text, let me slow down because I talk fast naturally, is referring to angels, angelic beings. Okay. And then we know that Buster Satan always on the scene, right? So we're talking in the supernatural realm when they all appear before the Lord and then the Lord asks, have you considered my servant? Have you considered my servant Job? What an amazing thing for the Lord to be able to say, have you considered, right? Which goes back to the question that the Lord posed 
Why not you? Can God consider you to go through the testing and trials? Can he know that he can send you through the fire and you yet honor him in all of your ways? Amen. Hallelujah. So we begin to see as it goes on after their appearance in the spiritual realm before the presence of God, after Job has been recommended for this testing, right? How Satan goes on attack. Okay. Um, he begins to uh, lose his cattle. He begins to lose his army, the people that work side by side with him, right? Um, until there was only four left. Until there was only four people left. Job loses almost everything that he has. The scripture goes on and he even, um, his wife begins to turn on him and tell him, why don't you curse your God, curse your God and die because everything around you is going wrong. Like th that's the person, your spouse is the person that you expect to stick by you no matter what. But in that text, we see that Job's wife even began to flip on him, right? She flipped the script on him. Okay. So, um, this text continues on and we get to Job's friend. So Job is suffering. I mean, like Satan keeps going back. If you read the chapter, read the book of Job, Satan keeps going back and he keeps piling on. Okay. And the fire keeps getting hotter and hotter. Right. And so we have Job's best friends, your best friends, your girls that's supposed to be with you through thick and thin, your bros, your bros. That's the new saying. My guy is supposed to be by you through thick and thin. They even began to come to him and they begin to tell him, uh, listen, you must, something ain't right. You doing something. You have to be up to something that is not pleasing. Hallelujah. In the eyes of the Lord, in order for the Lord to be sending you through this type of trial, sending you through this type of test. Hallelujah. But little did his friends know that the Lord had recommended him. Because he knew he could trust him. So why not you, Job? Why not you? On the other end of this camera, why not me? Hallelujah. We will be tested in this life. We will be tried in this life. But can you stand the test of time? Amen. Hallelujah. So his friends began to flip the script on him. But through it all, Job always honored God. And he refused. He refused. He refused to complain. And he refused to curse God. The text tells us that he began to curse his, the day that he, excuse me, the day that he was born, the day that he was born rather than curse, uh, the God of his salvation. Hallelujah. So his heart remained upright in a posture that was upright before the Lord through it all, through it all. Now, how many of us can go through everything that he went through? I mean, losing everybody, kids gone, cattle gone, riches gone, wealth gone, status gone plagued with sickness. Hallelujah. You went from the top to the bottom and yet he still trusted God. Yet he trusted God. So we want to, um, we want to skip. There's another biblical example. Let's use Abraham in Genesis 22. We know the story of Abraham and Sarah and how the Lord promised him a son, how Sarah laughed because she thought that the promise was utterly ridiculous because of her age, right? But time goes on and they have that promise. The Lord is good. He makes good on his word, right? And in Genesis 22, Job is afflicted. Why? I mean, not Job. Abraham is afflicted. Why not you, Abraham? Why not? Let me test that promise that I gave you. Hallelujah. And see if you'll yet honor me through it all. So the Lord giveth. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord taketh away. That's why we always have to remain humble of heart. That's why everything that we get, everything that we have, we should honor God our Father. Because it is in Him that we live, move, and we have our being. The jobs we have, glory be to God. The money and the wealth that we're able to attain, glory be to God's high name. It all points back to God, okay? So uh, the Lord commanded Abraham to give his son as a sacrifice. As a sacrifice. Commanded him, hey, that, that promise that I gave you, you know what? I need that back. And I need you to sacrifice your only son. That son that I gave you, that I promised you, get yeah. 
Mm -hmm. You you were never going to keep him. So he thought. So Abraham thought. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? But his heart, he never ever questioned. He never questioned God. And he took that command like a G. He took it like a champ, right? Saddled up the ass. Got his, his homies, the closest ones to him. And he went on his journey to make this sacrifice unto the Lord, his son. Oh my goodness. How many of us will be able, I mean, we'd be complaining and crying, acting crazy, wilding in the floor. But he did what the Lord told him to do. Why not you, Abraham? Let me test you and see what your character looks like and see what your integrity looks like and see what the posture of your heart looks like towards me. Do you really love me like you say you love me? Hallelujah. When it all comes down to it, do you love me like you say you really love me, right? So we know in that chapter, all the way into the, I mean, Abraham prepares the wood. He gets everything staged up to make this sacrifice of his only son, of his son, Isaac, right? And all the way up until the point when the Lord, I mean, when Abraham begins to pull back that ax to kill his son, then he hears the voice of an angel from heaven calling him, Abraham, Abraham, I have prepared a sacrifice for you. And he looks over and he sees the ram in the bush. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So why not you? Can the Lord send you through the fire? And trust you to still praise him even when it's hard to do so. Come on, scripture. I bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That scripture that we love to quote, but can we really carry that thing out? Can we walk that out in the darkest of times, in our darkest of days? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why not you? Why not you? It was good for me that I was afflicted that I might learn of your statutes. Our tests and trials are for God to work in us and work out of us, right? Work in us and work out of us. It's not because he's angry, not because he's a, you know, he is a vengeful God, but not because he's being vengeful towards you because he's testing. We have to realize that in this life, we will have tests. In this life, we will have trials. But it's so that God can get the glory in our lives. Hallelujah to God. Our tests and trials, they work in us character. They work in us patience. They work in us humility, right? Come on. They work in us uh, a sympathy and empathy. Some things that we've gone through, I know I, that's personal. Some things that I've gone through allow me to be sympathetic to other people and be empathetic to other people, right? If you've never lost anything or never in a been in a position of need, it would be easy for you to look through to look at someone else through a judgmental lens. Well, I don't, I, I ain't helping because I, that ain't my business, that ain't my, but when the Lord begins to strip things away from you, hallelujah to God, it builds a level of sympathy and you can be empathetic to the sufferings of other people, right? It adds integrity. Our test and our trials adds integrity. Our testing and our trials can add to us a level of intimacy with God that we've never known, right? Because we could go through some things that could simply I mean, listen, cut you down at the knees where all you can do is crawl into the presence of God. God, I need thee. Oh, hi. Every hour I need thee. Bless me now, my savior. Right? Hallelujah. So in suffering and testing and trials, you can learn to develop a deeper level of intimacy with God. And sometimes God will use your testing and trials to do just that because he needs to draw you closer to him, right? He needs to draw you closer to his bosom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those tests and those trials that builds up your most holy faith. Hallelujah. And this is just the same thing. It adds to the weight of your prayer. Testing and trials can add to your humility, add to your humility, helping you to be humble of heart, 
Thank you, Lord. It adds to our worship and our adoration to God. So aside from what I have, aside from what I need, Lord, because everything around me is a mess right now, all I can do is fix and focus my attention on you. So, Father, I love you for who you are. Not for what I have. Not for what I've acquired, not for the 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 uh, DD and DDS and uh, you know MA behind my name, all our degrees and accolades away with that. But Father, I love you for who you are. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. So our testing and our trials they come to build us up. They come to make us. They come to shape us. Right. It was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn of thy statutes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our afflictions also come to strip away, right? What what might they strip away? Pride, haughtiness, jealousy, covetousness, arrogancy. God begins to pull back the layers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord right there. He begins to pull back the layers. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. The layers of hurt, the layers of pain. The layers of rejection. Hallelujah. Let the Lord pull back the layers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're not mean like they say you are. That's the wall of protection that you have built up. But the Lord comes to pull back the layers on tonight. Thank you, Lord. Pull back the layers. Hallelujah. To get to the person that he created you to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let him pull back the layers in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah. I come to pull back the layers, hallelujah, the layers of your heart, hallelujah, to minister to that pain, to minister to that hurt, to minister to that rejection, hallelujah, to minister to that mother wound, that father wound, hallelujah, let the Lord minister to you right here, I literally feel the presence of God right here, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want him to have his way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Touch my brother and touch my sister, oh God. Hallelujah. Right where they are. Hallelujah. Lord God, wrap your loving arms around them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. We put up so many walls of protection because I know people can do the most. People can can hurt you to your core. Hallelujah, but allow Holy Spirit to heal you. Allow him to make you whole, right? So that you can love again, so that you can trust again. And even in loving and trusting again, we still move in the wisdom of the Lord, right? Right? Thank you, Lord God, but allow the Lord to come into the depths of your heart and to minister to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we thank you for that moment right there, God. I believe that somebody needs that. Hallelujah. I believe that somebody needed that moment right there. Hallelujah. So the Lord um, built, he deals with arrogancy. Thank you, Lord. And he deals with self-sufficiency outside of him. Because sometimes we can start to feel ourselves. And but I don't need, I don't need the Lord. I don't need, I can do this by myself. I mean, he good and stuff. Yeah, God, we praise you. But the Lord, oh, he'll have to break you down, bump you down a couple of notches, right? Hallelujah. So God, we bless you for that. He, he deals with our lack of trust, our lack of trust in him. The Lord can remove everything away from you and you don't have no choice but to trust him, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So why not you? That is the word for tonight. Why not you? Let him, I'm from St. Louis. Why not you? I live in Dallas, but y'all know that dialect come through every now and again. (laughs) So we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Let him consider you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. Let him get you to the place where you can know him. 
and the fellowship of his suffering. You can know him as Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. You can know him as Rapha, the one who heals, right? You can know him as Shama, God with you. You can know him as El Shaddai, God Almighty. You can know him as Elroy, the strong one who sees. The strong one who sees you in your suffering and your pain. The strong one who sees you in that moment of testing. And I promise that you're not alone. I promise that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be with you always. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. He's the Lion of Judah. Ha, Yabasho. He fights for us. Thank you, Father God. He fights for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ezekiel said he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Hallelujah. So our testing and our trials come so that we can also go closer to him and learn of him and learn of his character and learn of his heart and learn what he desires from us. Right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. It was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn of thee, that I might learn of your statues. Hallelujah. What are his statutes? What are his decrees? The definition said that it's a decree from an almighty God, right? So one of the statutes, Romans 8 and 28, is all things work together for the good to them who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. 2 Timothy 2 and 3, hallelujah, that says endure hardness as a good soldier endure hardness as a good soldier. I was studying a little bit in that text. I got stuck there because that was when Timothy was writing letters to Paul, encouraging him on his journey while Timothy was yet in prison. Come on, come on. Reaching back and encouraging his brother, encouraging his son in the gospel. And that literally, like when I was reading that, it brought tears to my eyes. Telling him to be strong, be strong. Don't be faint of heart. Hallelujah. But in, endure hardness as a good soldier. And that lets you know right there that in this life, we will have trials. We will have tests. We will go through things, but be of good courage. We put our faith and our trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Another one of his decrees, his statutes. Hallelujah. That says, this is the NIV version. Dear friends, do not be surprised by the fiery darts and ordeals that has come to do what? To test you. Come to test you. So why not you? Why not me? Oh Lord, why not me? I got a testimony in and within itself. Why not me? As if some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice in as much as you participate in Christ's sufferings. Why not you? Come on now. Why not you? Being in a situation where your friends are making a mockery of you. Your friends are trying to figure out what's going on in your life. That you losing everything. But how many of y'all know that the anointing cost? The anointing cost. Hallelujah. The anointing cost. The anointing cost. It comes with a price. It comes with a price of suffering. It comes with a price of testing. It comes with a price of trying, the trying of your faith. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. I know about trying. I know about testing. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all hear me saying, I just came out of an ordeal, losing, losing, and having friends saying, oh, we feel sorry for y'all. Oh, we, uh-uh, like Job's friend. Come on. And I'm like, Lord, really? You got us out here in these streets like this? But the anointing costs. But when God adds back, right? He adds back a hundredfold. Okay. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord will not allow you to be put to shame like the word of God says. So you may go through for a little bit. You might hear the noise, hear the chatter, but he won't allow you to, he will not allow you to be put to shame. 
as the word of God tells us, right? In Isaiah 43 and 2, one of my favorite scripture texts that says, when thou walketh, come on, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. God ain't going to let you be overtaken by what you're going through. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. So he's got you. He's right there with you. Why not you? Why not you? We all want the miracles and the signs and the wonders. We want the anointing to follow us. We want God's anointing to rest upon our lives, upon our ministries. Baby, it's going to cost you. Sir, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Right? It will cost you. Have you out here looking like a fool? Come on, Job. Having people questioning what's going on with them. They say the Lord is there everything. The Lord this, the Lord that. Have you looking around like, Lord, have thou forsaken me? But in those times, you have to stand on the word of God. And you have to stand on what you know that you know that you know. That he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. So he is with you. Our tests come to refine us. Hallelujah. To shape us, to make us, to mold us into who God wants us to be. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are mindful of us. Lord, equip us for the storm, oh God, that that we are in even right now, that some of us are in right now, God. Give us the strength to endure. Give us the strength to grab a hold to the horns of the altar. Hallelujah. Give us the strength to draw from your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we know that you will not allow us to go under. You will not allow us to be overtaken. As Isaiah 43 and 2 said, when we go through the waters, oh, you'll be with us through the fire. You're with, you're with us. It won't overtake us. Hallelujah. Lord, so help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we, we make the declaration that we'll trust you. Through the hurt, through the pain, through the shame, God will trust you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll we'll trust you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. With our lives, we'll trust you. With our children, we trust you, oh God. Hallelujah. With our future. Yes, Lord. With our our future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah with our future. Somebody needs that. We trust you, Lord. Don't panic. Don't panic over your future. Hallelujah. God sees and he knows where he's going to take you, right? He knows the thoughts and the plans that he thinks towards you. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. So we trust you, God. We take our hands off of the wheel. We take our hands off of the wheel and we say, Lord, you have your way in my life. Hallelujah. Lord, you have your way. I scoot over, right? Because we try to drive. We try to tell God what to do. Hallelujah. But Lord, we give you permission to have your way. We give permission for your complete and total will to be done in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God, as Job, help us to honor you through the entire process, oh God. Knowing, knowing that you're going to give back to us 100-fold. Hallelujah to God. Lord God, we promise to trust you in everything. In all of our ways, we'll acknowledge you. In all of our ways, we'll acknowledge you. Thank you, Lord. In all of our ways, we'll acknowledge you. Knowing that you will direct our paths. Why not you? Right? Take it like a champ. God is with you. He won't leave you. He will not fail you. The Bible says that he's a man that he cannot lie. So the promises that he's spoken to you, he's still going to do it. You guys, 
things that the Lord has been telling me since I was a little girl. I'm just now starting to see the manifestation of that just now. And I had to go through the process, the process, right? To get to a place in the Lord where he said, now you're ready. Now you're ready. Now I can elevate you. Now I can send you out. Now you're equipped and still being equipped to fulfill the will that I have for you. So I pray that this blesses you guys. Hallelujah. I pray that you endure hardness as a good soldier. Draw from the strength of the Lord. Draw from the strength of prayer. Draw from the strength of fasting. There's been many days in the seasons of testing and trials. Look, sometimes you just got to go and just sit in the presence of God. Just let the tears fall. Lord, I have nothing to say. And in those moments, that's when the Holy Spirit can pray for you, right? Your heavenly language begins to pray for it because you don't know. What does the word of God say? That God gives us utters and moanings that we don't even understand, but our spirit prays, prays for us. Sometimes just sit in the presence of God, lay in the presence of God. God, I need the O. Hallelujah. So he won't let you fall. God's got you. He's got you. I promise you, he's got you. And after you come out of this storm, after you come out of this test, you're going to be more appreciative, more appreciative of him, his role in your life, and that you made it, that you made it with your relationship with him intact. So don't leave him. Don't leave him because the flame is being kindled up on you. Because things seem to be going wrong. Don't leave God. Leave him for what? And to go where? Like, not out in these streets. Not out in this world. Oh my. The Lord is soon to come. We see it every day on the news. People are literally losing their minds. But we know that we have a hope. We know that we have a future. And we know that we're just, we are pilgrims passing through. Because we're living this life to live again. Amen. So you guys be blessed. I know that this blessed somebody. I know because I heard the word of the Lord. So somebody is going through right now and you needed this. You needed to know that it's all good. And you're going to make it. You're going to make it. I promise you, you're going to make it. If I can make it, you can make it. If I can make it after being married for getting ready to come up on 19 years and just coming out of being displaced for a year and a half, and like, Lord, we've been married too long for this foolishness. What's going on? You can make it. Some days I literally, like, had to hold on to my, my mental, right? I couldn't think about my kids because I would have went under. But it was the Lord that kept me through that storm. Kept me through that storm. That storm that he ordained. Because when he was ready to bring us out, y'all. Move me from St. Louis, Missouri <clears throat> to Dallas, Texas. In Dallas for a good year and a half. Started out, you know, we had a place. Then we ended up this place. And then my husband like, what? What? How did we even get here? I had to... Listen, we just had to lean on God. We just had to lean on God. Sometimes we like to thank the funk. We want everybody to think that everything is all gravy and everything is all good. And we like to keep up these facades in front of people. Um, we even have friends come down and, you know, wanted to visit. And it was so humiliating. So humiliating, you all, because we were living in a hotel. Living in a hotel. And I was like, do they know? Like, you know, why would anybody want to come visit? And we are literally like living in a hotel and then those friends came down come on joe come on those friends came down and was sitting and looking all crazy and you know saying i feel sorry for y'all those are not 
Huh. No, you need some friends that's going to pray you through. That's going to say, girl, I got you. I got you. This is only a test. This is only a season. Bro, I got you. Right? But we had a Job experience. That y'all must have did something wrong for the Lord to bring you to this situation. But the whole time I knew that God was with me. Did it hurt? Yes. Was I humiliated? Yes. Was that hotel sticker on my dog on windshield? Humiliating. During the pandemic? Yes. But I was hearing the voice of the Lord saying, in the midst of that trial, in the midst of that trial, hold on to me. In the midst of that trial, focus more on me. So when y'all hear me say the Lord talking about focus more, that was in that time. I'm like, God, you got to be kidding me. Focus more on you. And I'm going through in this way. But it was in that season that the Lord elevated my entire life. Elevated my whole life. The supernatural encounter that I had. I'll link the video in the description box. In that hotel. And it wasn't no cream of the crop hotel. Okay? Me and my husband and my children. Because Dallas is expensive. So even the hotel rent was like crazy high. But even in that hotel... I was taken up into a supernatural encounter. And the Lord or somebody, I'm going to say the Lord, an angelic experience, grabbed me by the nape of my collar in this supernatural encounter and said, I'm taking you higher. So you have to suffer when I say the anointing will cost you. The anointing cost. It cost. I had to lean on God. I get about so did it show. I had to lean on him when I knew people were talking about us. I had to lean when I know people had their mouth on us. I had to lean on him when I didn't understand. God, why would you let me go through this? Why? Why? Because I got a little bit of bouginess. Like, I'm real down to earth. But, you know, but the Lord will strip you. Excuse me, y'all. I didn't talk through the uh, the musical. But the Lord will strip you. He'll strip you of everything that you thought. You Those things you thought were uh, undergirding you or you thought was your foundation. The Lord will strip it. So hold on to God. Nothing catches him by surprise and he knows what he's doing, right? And even more so all the way up until it was time for us to, you know, get ready to transition out of that. I knew even the more that the Lord's hand was like that test was ordained by the Lord. Because the Lord told me, start packing. Like, okay, God, I hear you. I hear you. Listen, I told y'all, all I know is that I hear God. I hear the Lord when he speaks. So I told my husband, God says, start packing. And, you know, at a certain level of excitement, I'm like, thank you, God. Finally, we're getting out of here. Because there were days I'm like, I don't know if we're going to make it. I mean, I don't know when we're going to get out of this test. Trying to save up to get out of there and then trying to maintain that place as well so we won't end up on the street. So I started packing. And then I started searching for a place to stay. And then even filling out the application for the place to stay, I was nervous, like God, because we had tried to get out of there before. Listen, the Lord will send you through situations and it's not over until he says it's over. Because I had tried to get out of there. We tried to get out before. And all our applications were getting denied. And I'm like, for what? Like, we have the credit. There's nothing going on to where we should not be able to get out of here. 
It's all in God's time and God is in control. He's in control of the good and the bad, the in between, the middle, the happy, the sad, all of it. So he told me to start packing. I started packing. Filled out application, found a couple of places that I like. And I was nervous because prior to, I'm like, Lord, we got denied. Everywhere that we applied to, I wasted so much money in application fees because we got denied. So even though I heard the voice of the Lord, I was still like, God, I know I heard you. I know I heard you, but it was still that little ounce of nervousness. And, you know, I'm waiting for the people to give me my response. And um, this ain't that far, y'all, because I just moved in May. This is not that far back. This is fresh off the press. We just got back into a place in May. And so I filled out the application and we're waiting for the people to tell us yes or no. And before they could tell me no, I heard my Lord say, you approved. You are approved. Y'all know he wakes me up out of my sleep because the Lord know I was a little on edge. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Like, so it just put everything in perspective. Like that God ordained that test and that trial. Have you considered my servant, Regina? Can you strip her of a foundation? Right? To where she don't really have any place to call home for a whole year and a half. Yet I trusted him. I had no choice. I had no choice but to trust him. So y'all ain't talking to nobody that ain't been through nothing. Okay? Can he consider you? Can he consider you? Can he trust you to keep it together? Can he trust you to yet trust him when everything around you is sinking? Okay? When everything around you is upside down, can he trust you? So, y'all, I'm going to get out of here because I done been on here for 40 minutes and I have never done a video that long. But I pray that this blesses you. I pray that my testimony blesses you. I want to be transparent as possible. We try to fake the funk in front of cameras and stuff and not be true to our testimony. But I'll be crazy not to tell what the Lord has done for me. Amen. So, until next time, you guys, I love you. I will be back with another video. Um soon y'all know it's not too long in between time so god bless you enjoy the west the rest of your week heaven speaks let us listen and let us obey love you guys bye bye